This is a wonderful place to watch turtles. Snapping turtles, box turtles, wood turtles, and painted turtles all live in this place. What makes them able to survive in the wild? This is the eastern box turtle, and the first characteristic that we notice that would help her survive in the wild is her camouflage shell and her body. Um, she would blend in very well to the forest floor where she would be spending most of her time. Additionally, she has this great shell that covers all of her body and will enable her to tuck in her legs, her arms, as well as her head and her tail into the shell. On the bottom, she has this magnificent hinged shell where she could actually go all the way inside and close up tight to protect herself from predators. This is a stink pot turtle. Again, we can see that this turtle is very well camouflaged to his environment as well. He is going to spend most of his time in the water, down in the mud and the muck in the bottom of the stream. Um, and in order to protect himself, again, the hard shell on both the top and bottom, but you can see that the bottom shell doesn't completely cover. And so he needs to have an additional way of protecting himself. This turtle is called the stink pot because he lets off a musk, an odorous yellowish green substance that he releases from a gland near his tail that will deter predators from eating him. This is the common snapping turtle and I don't recommend holding them ever like this. Um, they are not typically this calm. This turtle has been in captivity for quite some time and so he's one that I'm familiar with and have held since he was just a baby. But what helps this turtle survive in the wild? Again, camouflage, coloration. Um, and then, as many of you well know, the snapping turtle is a particularly aggressive turtle um, and has an extremely long neck and strong jaws in order to snap at whatever might be attacking him. Many folks don't know, though, that the reason that snapping turtles do this is because of their bottom shell. The bottom shell is not nearly large enough to cover the turtle's body, and so it needs to be defensive. It needs to be aggressive in order to protect himself. Now that we've looked at some of the special characteristics of these turtles, we can appreciate how well adapted they are to survive in their environment. See you at Shavers Creek. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.